working with you in that retreat, I saw how much emphasis that you did put on those small group gatherings, so those those icebreakers, and they were great because I suck at icebreakers. I love playing them. I don't like forming them. I, you know, I'm socially awkward that way. But you put them together, and you kind of like, you know, you're like, hey, do this. I'm like, do what? I think it comes down to is uh, you have to keep your energy up. I think facilitating it is a huge setting the stage. If you're like just setting, if you're just explaining the game, like, and then you gotta do this, and then you gotta do that, There's... they're gonna be like, oh, so this is not a fun thing. I don't have to. I'm, I'm just gonna have monkey see, monkey do. I'm gonna have the same energy. You gotta be exciting. Yeah, you have. You have to be excited. Yeah, excited. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to this episode of This Connected. Yeah. We are playing 64 Squares. <laughs> huh? <laughs> we played 64 Squares. He, um, <laughs> the first thing that I want to say, have you ever played um, within a youth ministry context, um, what is it called, Red Rover? Red Rover, Red Rover, yes. <laughs> Why is that a game? <laughs> we almost broke our neck playing that. I used to play her as a teen, and like people would run s so fast, they would sprint so fast into people's arms, um, and just like clothesline them. Send Tony right <laughs> over. <laughs> and they would always pick me too, because I was like the shortest kid, so they're like, oh, this is going to be fun. Um, and I'd still get hit. <laughs> Fall to the ground. Man, we can't play that. I don't think we can play that. I don't think we can play anything anymore. No, no, we, we, have to, we used we have to, to play like um. We burn. played war one time. War? What's that? Yeah, basically, um, we had turned over all of the tables in the in our church's plaza as barriers, oh. and so <clears throat> you know we had two teams and they were armed with with um, um, flower bombs and shells, and so they had to navigate through and. Like the other, it was basically war, and like a just war. Yeah, like a just war, because <laughs> there are just wars, mm -hmm. and this one was a just war. It's a just, holy war. It's just a very messy, messy, messy war to clean up. Because you know what? When you're trying to sweep up flour that got wet, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Isn't I always? I was talking to um, Melissa from St. Peter's St. Paul. Um, at the retreat, and I was telling her, I think it's hilarious the way that teens act before the icebreaker and then during the icebreaker. Because before they're all like loving and they love each other and they're like laughing with one another, and then as soon as the icebreaker starts, they're screaming at each other and turning on each other, and it's completely full arms. It's like it's a game. If you win or lose, nothing's gonna happen. This your life's not gonna change, but they get so into it. Like like that. And it's not like we have great prizes for them. We don't usually give them prizes. <laughs> I don't know. There's absolutely no prize except, you know, that there's a group that won. It's like, um I'm I'm not gonna I wish Jacob wouldn't need this, but like isn't it psychologically like there's something like your brain's telling you that there's gonna be some sort of reward just from winning? That's why you have that driven, competitive nature. It's like biblical. Humans. Well, that too. Yeah. But, like, you just naturally want to win. Like, there's a, I don't know, um, a chemical know. reaction when you win. Yeah, that brain. high. You know, yeah. You get the endorphins. Endorphins, yeah. You know, when, when, um, when you succeed at something. And I think when, when, when it's great with even icebreakers that are like that, is it's all fun, and then they lift up the other people... Um, with them, because there's enjoyment in that. But they also learn some stuff. 